So I've looked at hundreds of Linux distributions on camera before, and there's constantly new distributions that are created that crop up. And, you know, I get new recommendations for distributions I've never heard of all the time. And the other day, someone recommended that I take a look at Orion. Now, Orion is interesting because as I'm reading their website, so many Linux distributions these days are either based on Debian or Arch, right? <laughs> but the great thing about Orion, what makes it interesting, is it's actually based on Alma Linux. So Alma is like a, a Red Hat clone. So this is kind of interesting in that it's a different kind of base system. And when you go to download Orion, they have your desktop standard edition, which is what I'm going to take a look at today. They also have have a business plus edition and from what I can tell the differences are very minor I think the business plus edition comes with uh, docker built in and LibreOffice pre-installed other than that uh, the standard desktop edition has Lutris installed for gaming where obviously on a business kind of edition uh, no gaming is necessary so Lutris is not there on the business plus edition but for the most part they look very similar so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and spin up a quick virtual machine and I'm going to install Orion, their desktop standard edition, and then I'm going to take it for a quick look. So let me go ahead and boot into Orion Lime R2. So I'm assuming that's a code name, Lime R2. Uh, by the way, for those wondering about support, they are supporting this particular release of Orion, they say on their website, until the year 2032. So that's eight years of support, potentially. And it boots us into a live desktop environment. It looks like they're going to use GNOME as their desktop environment. Do I want to take a tour uh, about Orion? Sure, why not? Start the tour, and I'm just going to quickly uh, cycle through this. You can see you can get an overview of some of the apps and theming. Really, not much here. Uh, I mean, it's a neat little welcome screen, but uh, as far as information, it's really just some artwork with a couple of sentences on each tab. So let me go ahead and close out of that. Let me go ahead and run through an installation. So I'm going to install to hard drive. It was interesting that it had a Fedora logo on the icon there, uh, even though, again, I think this is based off of Alma. And unfortunately, it uses the uh, Anaconda installer that Fedora uses. <laughs> so I actually hate this installer program because I find it very confusing. The very first thing I need to do is choose my language. English US is correct for me, so I'm just going to click continue here. And then keyboard, English US, time and date, America slash Chicago is my correct time zone. So it's already figured that out. I don't have to do anything. So that's nice. Installation, destination. Now this is always the confusing part because I only have one virtual hard drive in this virtual machine and it has a check box right next to it. So that means it's actually selected this disk for installation. But every time I use this installer, I assume that none of the disks have been checked. So I have to check one. So when I hit this, it actually unchecks it. <laughs> so, you know, I need to check it back, obviously. So I need to do that. Storage configuration. Do I want to do automatic or custom? I'll do the automatic. Do I want to do encryption? No, I don't mind uh, not encrypting my data here in this VM. So now I need to go to the top left hand screen here and click done and then we come back to the screen here we need to set our root password so I'm gonna give my user a strong and complicated password and then confirm the strong and complicated password and now what I need to do is once again top left hand corner click done which is uh, that's a strange place for having to confirm something It's the top left hand corner that's a very weird spot uh, it says uh, press done again to use the password anyway. It didn't like my super complicated password. I'm going to force it to let me use that password. All right, and then we need to create our user. So I'm going to call my user DT. We need to create a strong and complicated password for the DT user. And then once again, confirm the password. And now click done. It's going to complain the password. It's not great. I'm going to click done a second time. And it should go ahead and allow me to use it. And now all I need to do is hit the button that says begin installation right here. And away it goes. I'm assuming this portion of the installer is going to take a few minutes. So I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to step away, grab me a cup of coffee. 
All right, the installation has completed. This portion of the installation took about 10 minutes or so. And you can see I need to click this button that says finish installation. I also get this little uh, notification that use of this project is subject to a license agreement found at user share Orion release slash EULA. So I guess there is a end user license agreement that we agree to when we install this. Let me go ahead and click finish installation. And now what I need to do is go ahead and reboot the machine. And I'm going to do that right now. And it reboots just fine. We come to our login manager, which is GNOME's login manager, uh, GDM. Let me go ahead and click my username. And let me go ahead and enter my super secure password. Once again, we get our little welcome application. This time I'll decline going through that. Uh, the very first thing I want to do before proceeding is look for the display settings program. So let's go ahead and change our screen resolution to a 1920 by 1080 screen resolution. So everything looks a little better, keep the changes. And now every time I come back to this virtual machine, it should remember that I always want a 1920 by 1080 screen resolution. So first impressions, I can understand why it was named Lime because obviously it's a very lime green. So I'm assuming that's what in inspired the code name. I also love the fact that it has a more traditional Windows 7 kind of look and feel to it as far as we've got our uh, panel and taskbar down here at the bottom of the screen. We've got our quick launchers. We've got a traditional kind of start menu, if you will. So we have this applications menu where, you know, of course, traditionally GNOME has the little overview uh, dash area. If I hit super, uh, we do have type search, but we don't have a listing of all our applications showing here. That's kind of interesting. I wonder uh, why it is done like that. But let me quickly go through the menu system and show you what is installed out of the box here on Orion. So we have, these are bookmarks for our file manager. What applications do we have installed? Let's go to all applications. Okay, they do break it down by category. So let's go to accessories and under accessories we have files, which of course is going to be our Nautilus file manager. Nautilus is an okay file manager. It's not my favorite, but it's not a bad file manager. We also have, uh, well, I can get back into settings. You know what, that menu system is a little clunky. It'd be nice. I could get to this on the front page instead of having to first click all applications and then into accessories and then for example onto the text editor program which I'm assuming is gedit let's go to help and this is gedit text editor so they are using gedit for their plain text editor also under applications, we have our games category and here we have both Lutris and Wine Mine installed. So Wine, uh, that's gonna be a Minesweeper game and Lutris, of course, it's going to be the uh, Lutris game launcher. You can see, play all your games in Linux, add a game or connect a service to begin using Lutris. I don't know much about Lutris, but I do notice as soon as I open this program for the very first time, it's installing some stuff, right? It's extracting some things, probably some wine stuff going on in the background. I'm not sure exactly what was going on there, but that is interesting that it automatically takes care of a lot of that setup process for you. In the menu, we have a graphics category and we have both GIMP and Inkscape installed. So GIMP is for manipulating uh, raster based images and Inkscape is for vector graphic images. Let me click on Inkscape. I don't really ever use Inkscape. I, I actually need to learn a little bit of Inkscape one day to become more proficient in this program. But uh, we have a little startup screen here. Let's go ahead and click on start a new document. Let's see what version of Inkscape we're on. If I go to about Inkscape, Inkscape. This is Inkscape 1.1. You can see draw freely. Uh, so let's go ahead and close that out. Under the internet category, we have Firefox as our default browser. Let's go ahead and see what version of Firefox we're on. And if I go into the menu system and go to help and to about Firefox, we are on Firefox 115.7.0 ESR. So that is the extended support release version of Mozilla Firefox. Also under internet, we have HexChat, which is an IRC program for internet relay chat. We also have Remote Viewer, and that's to access remote desktops. 
And also we have a office category where because I chose the standard desktop edition, we don't have LibreOffice installed. We do have evolution for an email client. Um, but if you chose the business plus edition of Orion, you would have the full LibreOffice suite here as well. Under the sound and video category, we have Brazero, which is GNOME's disk burning utility. We have Cheese, which is GNOME's webcam utility. And then we have Videos, which of course is the GNOME video player. Let's go ahead and open the video player and let's see, go to help. Let's see what version we are on. So this is Videos. It's actually a program called Totem. Totem is actually the name of the binary. So if you actually were running this from a run launcher, you would type the name Totem. Videos is just a generic name that GNOME, for whatever reason, they choose to use generic names for all their applications. And it drives me absolutely bonkers <laughs> that GNOME does that. Then we have our system tools category, which I'm assuming is just going to be things like, yeah, your uh, system monitoring applications. Uh, we both have the uh, GNOME system monitor application. We also have HTOP, which of course is a terminal based uh, system monitor. Let's go ahead and run HTOP and let me zoom in because the font is real small here. So let's go ahead and see what kind of CPU and RAM we're using here. Uh, we shouldn't really be using any CPU because I'm not doing you know anything really CPU intensive like compiling software or you know, streaming on YouTube or anything like that inside this VM. So the CPU usage very low, which you would expect. The RAM usage, we're using about 1.1 gigs of the six gigs of RAM I gave this VM. And that's about standard for modern day GNOME. Let me close that out. Also under system tools, we did have Vert Manager here for managing virtual machines. Vert Manager is actually what I use to make many of my videos. This virtual machine of Orion is actually running inside Vert Manager on my host machine, actually. So I, I do love Vert Manager. We have a utilities category where you have some of the standard GNOME utilities like the GNOME calculator, the GNOME document viewer for reading PDFs, the GNOME image viewer and their screenshot utility, which I, I do like their little simple screenshot utility. It's, you know, it's not much to it, but again, sometimes the simple applications are the best. And one other thing I want to do is at the beginning of this applications menu, there is this arc menu settings that's here in the favorites. Arc menu is the extension they're using for this particular menu system they're using rather than the default, you know, GNOME dash overview thing. But if you wanted to tweak this or even go back to like your standard default kind of GNOME look, you could go in here and change some things for me. You know what? I, I'm kind of fine with the default layout, so I'm just going to leave everything as as default or some of the pinned applications down here so these quick launchers one of the quick launchers of course is the software center so let's actually go into GNOME's software center here and let's see what is available so if I go to explore and let's explore I don't know for work let's see what kind of choices of software we have and you know what I would really like to do is install maybe some proprietary software just to see if we have that option available to us. So if I go, is there a way to search? Yeah, the search thing is there. And then let, let me search for Discord because obviously that's proprietary and it's not there. How about Zoom? Zoom is a common application many people have to use these days. It is also not there. So let me go into software repositories here. Surely there is a way for me to get some of that stuff. Is there some extra repositories I could turn on? Well, I could turn on um, testing, but that's not what I wanted. I was going to see if maybe uh, Flathub was in here for some flat packs. Um, RPM Fusion is here and it is turned on. I was really hoping for maybe some flat pack support. Yeah, it's kind of weird that Flatpak is not enabled out of the box. Uh, you know, these RPM distributions uh, being, you know, Red Hat based, you would think Flatpak would, would be something out of the box, just ready to go. Kind of like, you know, on Ubuntu based distributions, you know, I expect, you know, Snap support just to work on all of them, although some forks of Ubuntu remove snaps for whatever reason. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of silly to base your project on an existing project and then, you know, not support some of the underlying technology. But let me go to the Orion uh, website. I will say their documentation's not good. It's, there's very, very little documentation in many of these pages. You know, there's nothing on these pages. Installing applications. Okay, Flathub extends the available selection of applications. 
uh, you have to manually download the add-on. So if I just click this file and download it, okay, now what? Uh, once you've installed the file, reboot your computer. But really just downloading it? Is that it? I, I, is that it? Is that really that simple? Let me actually see. Again, you know, the documentation was kind of sparse there, but let me reboot the machine and see if we have a flat hub available to us upon reboot. I do notice that rebooting this virtual machine, all of a sudden we're installing updates, right? 32% complete. So I don't know if that had anything to do with me downloading that uh, flat hub repository file or if this is uh, just a, a normal kind of update for uh, some of the already installed system packages. I'm not sure. All right, and I'm back in the GNOME desktop. It says software updates have been installed. So let's see if now, if I go into the software center, now when I search for a piece of proprietary software that I would think would be available as a flat pack, Discord's not here, Zoom is not here. Maybe I still have to uh, turn it on in some way. Software repositories, this should be a lot easier. It should be a lot clearer exactly how to get these flat packs. I'm not really sure what I'm looking for. I don't know, but again, the website was not very clear on what to do on this. Let me go back into help, install applications, I download the flat pack repository. It says manually download the add-on. Uh, I never saw this kind of screen here. It says once you've installed this file, reboot, install it. So I guess there was something else I needed to do to the file. Let me go into uh, downloads here. Double click on it. Will it actually do something? Yeah, now it'll do something. So let me actually install that. So the updates on reboot before were just you know, standard system updates. But now I think I've actually added Flathub. And now I'm going to have to reboot one more time. So let me do another reboot. All right, now let's go ahead and see if we have Flatpak support now. Now let me search for Discord. And now Discord is actually here. If I click on it, you can see now I can actually install it. And I'm going to go ahead and cancel that install because it's, you know, a big program. It's an Electron program. You can see, though, that the source up here is from Flathub. So now we do have Flathub and Flatpak support. Let's go ahead and check a couple of things out in the terminal. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the terminal one more time. Let me zoom in this font. It's kind of small here. So let's do a DNF list installed. I believe that's the DNF command to actually list all your installed packages. And that was the right command because it actually gave me some output. Let's pipe that into WC-L to get a line count. And there are 1,702 packages installed natively from DNF, so as RPM packages. If I do a flat pack list, now there really shouldn't be any flat packs installed because I just now enabled flat pack support and I declined installing any flat packs just yet. So there's no flat packs installed out of the box. Let's see what kernel we are using. So uname r gives us kernel 5.14 kind of an older uh, LTS kernel. Let's see if Pipewire is installed as far as our audio server. I would expect it to be here, and it is. So you can see user bin Pipewire. So that's the Pipewire binary. So they are using Pipewire. And one other thing I want to check, since I did the automatic installation, I didn't partition the drives myself. Let's see what file system they're using. So a lot of RPM-based distributions these days would default to ButterFS, but it's possible they're defaulting to Extend4. So let's do a LSBOK-F uh, to give me the file system type. And VDA1, which is the main partition, is actually using uh, XFS as the file system. So that's interesting. XFS is more of a server kind of file system, very old, very stable. So it makes sense why a distribution like Orion probably defaults to XFS. One last thing I want to check. Let's see what kind of wallpapers we have as an option here. So if I right click and go to change background, Let's see if we have any other choices for wallpapers. And we have a lot of the standard GNOME wallpaper pack here. So a lot of abstract art. Um, we do have the Orion uh, themed wallpaper. 
uh, in different colors. So other than green, we have this uh, orangish yellow color. We have red as well. Wow, that's a bright red. <laughs> kind of like that, though. And of course, here is a darker blue. And then well, we do have, you know, it's like some standard GNOME wallpapers I've seen in the past, like this one here with the snowflake, which is actually very nice if you like uh, kind of black and white, you know, kind of grayish uh, backgrounds, which I prefer those kinds of backgrounds. That is a very nice one to go with. For me, I'm going to go ahead and set it back to the default wallpaper. So there you have it. That was a very quick and cursory look at Orion. Again, it's a brand new distribution, at least to me. I had never actually heard of this distribution until a few days ago when I had a viewer suggest, hey, would you please take a look at this distribution? I'm glad I did. It's kind of interesting, right? It's a, it's a different kind of distribution, being that it's an RPM-based distribution. And these days, it seems like 95% of the distributions that are recommended to me are either Debian-based or Harch-based. So it's nice to have a little variety. Overall, I, I'm pretty pleased with what I saw. I'll definitely keep up with this distribution as far as uh, see what it does in the future as far as development. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producer users of this episode. Matt, James, Steve, Armor Dragon, Darloff, Daylis, GDR, George Lee, Matthew, Methos, Urian, Paul, Peace Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Profit, Roll, and Soul Astry, Tian, Run, More Gentle, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at Orion, it wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work, want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.